Hello, my name is Fred Jensen. I'm the product manager of PowerLog, a CGG application. And today I'm going to be talking about similarity analysis. Now similarity analysis is an unsupervised machine learning workflow. So what is similarity analysis? Well, if you're given two different wells with two curves of interest, neutron and density, and you have a different set of points in each well, and a different number of points, how can you tell how similar the joint probability density functions are? Uh, looking at cross plots isn't going to help you. Any multi-well cross plots because you really don't get any metrics out. So if we do kernel density plots, where you can look at the scatter plots from the two wells, you'll see that the density of points is very important in estimating similarity. It's not only the distribution of points, but the density of points. And so similarity analysis assigns metrics to the similarity of the joint probability density functions. We extend the solution from 2D, two curves, to n dimensions and many wells. And that way you're seeing the similarity of each well to every other well. Now there are three types of metrics that come out of similarity analysis, at least our implementation of it. There's Jacquard similarity, the size of the intersection divided by the size of the union. The overlap similarity, the size of the intersection of two sets divided by the smaller of the two sets. And the intersection union, where you take the size of the intersection of two sets divided by the size of the union of two sets and that has a maximum value of 0.5. Of these three metrics, I have found that the Jacquard similarity contains the most information and is the most useful. So how do we use similarity analysis? And by the way, on the side of these images, this is showing two similar wells. And you can see they overlap beautifully. And this is showing two dissimilar wells. And there is a lot of spread between the probability density functions. So some of the applications are selecting reference wells for curve normalization, grouping of wells for generating higher quality synthetics. We also have unsupervised well group creation to create the groups to be used in these analysis, validating edited data compared to raw data, grouping of wells for complex interpretations, if a deterministic model applies to a well, it probably applies to all the similar wells. It's very good at finding anomalous data due to curve tool failure or calibration issues, and it can identify wells that just don't belong. So here's an example of a Woodford, and we have 16 Woodford penetrations to evaluate. And what they did is they did extensive curve editing prior to their view and they wanted us to verify that all the edited curve data was solid and consistent for inversion purposes. And here we see two wells that don't look all that similar. So we ran and here's the Jacquard similarity on the wells and you'll see that these wells all look pretty darn similar except for one well, the HU-127. And this is the kernel density plots on the HU-127 and the similarity is 58. It's pretty low. And you can see that they overlap density plots show a big discrepancy. If you look at the raw curve data or even at the uh, box plots, it's not obvious that the HU-127 data is different than the other wells. But it, it turns out when you go back and look at it, it is significantly different than the other wells. And then if you compare the similarity analysis on the raw data to the similarity analysis on the edited data, you see they did a really good job of editing the data. The wells are much more similar, all except the HU-127. So the recommendation to the geophysicist is, yeah, you can use all the wells, but don't use the HU-127. And there's an example of how to use similarity analysis. Now let's look at another field, Fandango field. And what we're trying to do here is generate synthetic DTs 
to be used in modeling. So the Fandango well is a South Texas well. It's a deep Wilcox well. And here's a structure map on the Fandango. And the, ob the objective is accurate synthetic acoustic curves. So here's what a Jupiter workflow for similarity analysis looks like. You select two or more wells in Project Explorer, and we're going to select all of these wells. You pick the curves you want to run it on, and you pick the zone you want to run it over. And selecting the interval for analysis is a very important step in the process. You don't want to compare a whole well to a small interval. You want to compare very similar intervals. And then you can define what kind of cluster map you want. There's a regular confusion matrix, or you can do the hierarchical confusion matrix. I like the hierarchical, and we'll be looking at that. And you can set a level of impurities. You can save the results to an Excel spreadsheet. And then you can set where you want to write the Excel spreadsheet. And these are the steps that, are, that, that occur when you run the Jupyter workflow. So we ran it on a large group of wells, and this is the results. And immediately, this group comes out as a group of highly similar wells. And we use gamma ray rho B, deep induction and neutron for the input curves. We used the raw data because we might want to use the results as selecting reference wells for normalization. The highly similar wells are now used as reference curves for normalization. And the Muzza 11 and the Line Decker 3 well, these two wells here, we got to question those wells. Those don't look very good at all. They look like they're way out of line with all the other well data. So we built a group of highly similar wells. And then we looked at their spatial distribution to ensure that we're just not biasing that all these wells were right next to each other. And while this distribution is an optimal, it's reasonable. And we use the data filters on our similar group to make a list of wells with DT. And these are our similar wells that have a sonic. So these are the wells that we're considering to use for generating a synthetic. But before we go generate the synthetic, we want to run similarity analysis on that group of wells. And now we see we have these wells, which are very similar. They have the, we know they're similar in the gamma ray density and neutron and resistivity. And now we also know they're similar in the sonic. Now here we only ran the neutron and DT curves because the neutron is very much like the DT in this part of the world. And this is a good way of evaluating the, the, how well, how consistent the DT response is. And here's the kernel density plot on two similar wells, and they are really similar. And here's the plot on two dissimilar wells, one of these three that are completely dissimilar. And in fact, this was run on the uh, Zachary 2 well versus the Rancho Blanco 5 well. So this one over here. Zachary 2 versus Rancho Blanco 5. And these two wells that are the same are the Rancho Blanco 1 and the Rancho Blanco 5. And we generate our synthetic. And this is one of the blind test wells. And it looks pretty darn good. So this was a dissimilar well that we didn't include in the uh, model wells. And then here is a look of what the um, blind test wells look like on the quality of the synthetic and the cross plot of the measured versus synthetic showed a nice R squared correlation of over 80%, a very reasonable high quality synthetic curve. So the technique is working to generate better quality synthetics. Now we're just going to glance at the teapot dome field because the teapot dome allows us to highlight one of the features we've added and that is the ability to generate Excel spreadsheets. So if you're running 100 wells or more, the jacquard plots are going to be so jammed together, you're not going to be able to read the well names, and you're not going to be able to figure out what's going on. So we output the jacquard similarities into an Excel spreadsheet, which you then can open and go searching through and take a look at the well distributions this way. Um, 
and then you can do whatever you do with Excel and you can filter the wells and get a better understanding. We also have a new tool which we're going to be showing later that allows you to input the Excel spreadsheet for automated creation of groups. And so now let's look at that. Let's look at Volva Field in the offshore Netherlands for automated group creation. So here's Volva Field. We have 15 wells that penetrate the target. We've run similarity analysis over the target formation, which was the Huggin, which is a middle Jurassic reservoir. It's a sandstone reservoir, which is kind of unusual for Jurassic but it's a deltaic uh, embayment and it's, it's a really highly porous sandstone. We use the density, the gamma ray, and the deep resistivity for the uh, similarity analysis. And then we took the results of Jacquard similarities into the suggest similarity well groups workflow. And then we created a group using the suggested group and then we're going to take a look at the results. Now over here we're showing this is a similar well and this is a highly dissimilar well. There's zero overlaps and one of the reasons for that is this well is production and this well doesn't because we're using the deep resistivity so the productive wells are high resistivity and the non-productive wells are low. Now this is gamma ray sonic. There's just the dissimilar wells are very dissimilar. So here is our unsupervised well group suggestions. We get a slightly different jacquard plot. Over here we're showing how the dendrogram broke the uh, jacquard similarities up by color and shows the different groupings that are being suggested by the, uh, by the workflow. This is also a Jupiter workflow. And we come out with three groups. We come out with this group, the middle group, and this lower group. So the middle group is the R group and we want to convert it into a well group in power log. It is the group with the most similar wells. And the way we do that is we take the Excel spreadsheet, we paste the results into our data filter and we do a search for the common well names and we get our list of wells and then we add those selected wells to a group. Very simple, very easy, straightforward way to build well groups in PowerLog. And now let's take a look at the observations on the well group we created. So the wells in the R group were some of the most productive wells in the group. So these were productive wells. There's a couple that weren't pro that were productive that weren't included, and we'll have to go back and look and see what made those wells different that they weren't included in the group. But there were a lot of similarities in this R group wells. Now similarity analysis is currently available as part of the automated log editing package of PowerLog. The automated log editing package includes automated depth matching, outlier detection, automated curve patching, and similarity analysis. The suggest similarity well group workflow will be available as part of the automated log editing package in PowerLog 11.0.2 and that's actually scheduled for release in August of 2021, which is going to be very, very soon. So it will be available very soon. So similar analysis is a very new and exciting method of classifying curve data and creating well groups. The applications of similar analysis, we're just beginning to understand all the applications. We've been working with it for a couple of years, but as we work with it more and more, we realize it probably has a lot more applications than are obvious. But we have obvious uses. One of them is grouping of well, similar well curves for normalization, similar well curves used for synthetic curve generation, detection of anomalous curve data, and then grouping of wells for advanced interpretations so that you can propagate the advanced interpretation rapidly from well to well. And the one thing we can say is that the groups of similar wells are likely to have high quality curve data. That is a given and that's one of the most useful results 
of similarity analysis. And I thank you for your time. And if you want to get in contact with PowerLog or CGG Geo Software in general, Monica will fill in the details here in a minute.